Hey, how's it going? And this is part two to the tutorial I just did on hitting a ball. And this is really tracking a flying ball, just kind of a primitive way. But I thought it might be helpful for some, I don't know who, but it's also a note to myself. So anyway, to do this, we're just gonna first click and make a right click and make a widget interface. So we'll go to this and we'll just call this I guess it's WBP tracker, something like that. And this is just going to be a really basic interface. So we're just going to get a canvas panel because you could spend all day working on something like this. And then we're just going to get a button and drag this onto the scene and pop it down there. And I guess we'll just get some text to make it kind of official. And I'll just put on the text here, we'll just say tracking info. And we can, I think we have size to content. Oh, I guess we gotta go on the button. Size to content. And that's all that's gonna be. That'll give us an on clicked. This needs to be a variable. And we'll just call this button. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to need some text variables. And I, I don't know, I've been thinking about this. Let's just drag on three. One, two, three. And we'll just have to know that there are, these aren't even in alignment, but we'll just kind of, like I said, this is just real quick and dirty. So on this one, we'll just call this, let's just call this X and it is a variable. And this one we'll call this Y and this one we'll call this Z. And actually I needed to set these other two to is variable too. And I don't know if I'll hook all these up, but I'll, I'll definitely hook up the, so one thing you can do on here is if we click the text, we can see that the position uh, X is 1160. Let's see. So we can to line it up and just type in 1160. And here too, same thing, 1160. Just to make it a little bit neater. Okay, and then we'll see if what we can do with that. So this is a little widget blueprinty. There's some complications that I have with doing this. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ball and we're going to create, we'll go into the event graph here. And this is kind of weird, but because it's tracking data, it's actually going to be going off of an event tick, which is kind of weird. It's kind of unorthodox in a way, because usually an event dispatcher is just as needed. And this is kind of feeding off of a tick, which isn't necessarily the most, you know, the best way in the world to do it, but it works. So that's what we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an event dispatcher. And I'm just going to call this stat update here like that. And then all we're going to do is we'll compile and save. And now I can call this. So I can actually just drag this on, I believe, and go call. So this will be every frame. It's going to be sending out an update to through the event dispatcher to the blueprint widget. And then we need, I believe, to create some three variables. And we're just gonna do this real quick. These are gonna be floats. So the first one is gonna be X and it's a float. It doesn't need to be instance editable. We'll hit control D one twice. And this one now hit F2. I can click F2 and name it Y. Whoops, Y. And click this one, click F2, and name it Z. So we've got our three variables. We'll compile and save. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our sphere here and drag it on like that. And then off of here, we're going to turn off context sensitive and we're going to search for 
get world location. So we want to know where in the world is this thing. Get world location. This one right here. So basically, where is Waldo? Because we hit it with the whacker and sent it flying. <laughs> and we don't know where it went. So like I said, we could set all of these. I don't know. I'm just going to set one of them so you can kind of get the idea of it. So we're just going to set the Z, which should be, I believe, the altitude. So if we hit Alt, click and drag, we'll get the set node. And here on this return value, we're going to break that into the XYZ value. So we're going to right click and split that. And then we're going to just plug this into here. And then if you want to set the other coordinates, you could do the same thing. Just drag them on and set. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to do... Z, which I'm pretty sure is comparable to the altitude. Okay, and then next what we're going to do is we're going to shift over. We're going to go into the level blueprint here. Oops, got to go back up here. And we're going to go into the level blueprint and we're going to add our blueprint widget so we can see it. So we're just going to click on event begin play. We're going to go create widget right there we're going to set it to our WBP tracker right there and then we're simply just going to go add to viewport and we'll just click it up like that okay and we'll click and I guess we can save the whole thing I'll just save it as untitled okay so now that takes care of that and if I hit play we should see the t something here we'll see the text blocks here and we'll see our button there. Okay. It already sent the ball flying. <laughs> so there is that. Now we're on kind of the home stretch here. There's just a couple little things we got to do next. And that is all going to be in the widget. And this is all going to be done off of binding, an event dispatcher binding. So I've done quite a few tutorials on the widget. And it can be frustrating sometimes because. It doesn't seem like things always, it's not always easy to get data from other blueprints in here, but the functional and property binding, I couldn't actually get them to work, but the the event dispatching worked. So what we're going to do is off of the event construct node, right here, we're going to get bind. Well, I think what we have to do first is, if I'm not mistaken, Yes, we need to create a reference. So for blueprint communication to occur, there needs to be a channel of communication. And that's usually through, and it can be done through a blueprint object reference. So we're going to create a blueprint object reference to this BP ball. So we got to come over here to, well, we can do it off of here. So we're going to pull off of here, off the event construct. Is that right? Yeah, this is right. So all we're doing here off the event construct is we're creating a channel of communication. So I don't want to make it more complicated than it is. So we're not going to cast to that blueprint. We're going to just go get actor of class. And that's going to be our BP ball right here. And then when we right click on this variable, what it's going to do, we can compile that. It's going to basically as far as I'm concerned, set a reference to that. So we're going to right click this and go promote to variable. And over here, we're just going to call this BP underscore ball underscore reference. So this is creating an object reference. And we can make this, I think we can click this. Yep, make it public or whatever we do so this sets basically you can think of it as like I'm laying down a like a telephone wire from the widget to this BP so this is basically laying down our telephone line or our cable whacker now with this cable set now all you have to do is pull this off and then I can access any of the data that's in here these variables that are in here but that wire has to be laid down first and this is essentially laying down the wire i guess that's the best way to say it now what this is going to drive off of is if we click on our button right here 
and it's going to go on clicked so when we click our button that's what's going to trigger all of this stuff so we're on the home stretch believe it or not so here what we're going to do is we're going to search well actually what we got to do is we got to get our wire and off of here we can search for what's called bind and this is going to be bind event to start update so this will provide a connection basically you can think of this as make putting in the wire and this is the data transmission over the wire <laughs> and then off of here we're going to pull off and get add custom event right here and we don't have to name it anything special but what's going to happen is when we click it's going to get a continuous feed from the tick remember the tick's going to be coming every frame so we're going to get constant data flow which is kind of an unorthodox way to use the event dispatcher but that's how i'm doing it this way and now what we got to do is just set set our our variable so the, the one data that we need is we want to get that z value so again we drag off of here and we should be able to say get z and we want that one right there and then what we want to do is we just this is the widget part of it is we're going to have a conversion happen here we want to get our our text which is this i should have named this better but it's a text static text widget and so we'll go get that and then off of this we're going to drag and get search for set text set text and this is what will put data onto our display so we we'll set text here and then this will plug in here and it, that's where it auto converts for us and then we just plug in this to this and then if we wanted to update those other values we could but just so it doesn't look so ridiculous i'm just going to type in something here is um <laughs> pending or something instead of just saying text block so we'll type that in and as far as i know that's everything so we'll compile and save we'll go save all and that's what it all looks like here so we're doing an event dispatcher and we created our reference our up here and then the bp ball has makes a is called it's setting out a call every frame and this values should be constantly updated so let's see if it works so we'll come back in here and i kind of try to reposition myself here okay so that's where the ball is it seems like where you place the sphere really makes a difference on what happens so when i hit when i hit play the ball should go flying and then I can click that button and then it'll tell me where it is in Z space. And then I could wire up the X and, X and Y if I wanted to do that. So let's see if it works. And the funny thing about this is when I hit play, you know, the, I should maybe put a delay note in there or something because it just goes right away. So anyway, let's see what happens. There it goes and I'll hit tracking and see that's the altitude, the Z axis, see that? So I guess we're at 49, <laughs> I guess in the world location. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care and have a great day. And please subscribe if you find this at all helpful.